The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, and uh, this is the Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking at the Dow for the S&P is unchanged. Uh, the QQQs are down a little bit. The IWM is down a little bit, and gold came back very nicely. I wanted to show you a couple of patterns that we're looking at here. One of the reasons why I wanted to do my webinar um, on some of the Chapman Wave techniques that have worked very well for us this year uh, I, I just wanted to show a couple of things here. First of all, we're looking at the two-minute chart. I'm always looking for at least a peak D can even go to a slightly higher high like an E, and then it can go sideways. It's kind of what we're looking at the two-minute chart. You went to the low at 10.30-ish. Uh, it's exactly 10.30 at 31, 3,111, round number low. Uh, that was at the E-mini two-minute chart, and it goes to a peak A. If it pulls back and it goes, it moves in 25 cent increments, one, one 25 cent uh, level above the previous high, that would start a leg B. It goes to leg B until that's called the floating ladder, until the price reverses, and then it's called the peak. It can pull back as long as it doesn't take out the starting point of that went to leg A. It's all in a, in a buy mode, meantime, uh, so in an up mode. And then the moment it takes out B, it starts C. That should take you to a buy mode, especially if the stochastic goes over 80%, which it did, and with the peak C, peak D, and then just one bar later goes to uh, an E, and now it's in a rectangle formation. I'm going to be talking about these in the uh, coming webinar. Uh, that's tomorrow night. And it's for subscribers. You can become a subscriber. You're able to see exactly what we're looking at um, and why we're looking at these things, how it's worked uh, for certainly for the stocks that we've had. Um, there have been some really nice gains and very, very nice um, compensatory reward for following um, the patterns that we've been identifying. So, yes, we missed out on the Dow because it went. Uh, um, it stopped us out just fractionally the other day on our short position, short-term short position. Uh, not all that much change other than the pattern itself broke to the upside. Now we have to deal with that. I'm saying not much, very much change because uh, it was an up mode. The technicals were very good. And I've been talking about this pattern. Maybe I can find it here and we'll just go to it quickly because it's all part of what I'm looking at here. Can I find it? Yep, I can. So that's going to be Dow uh, dollar I N D U. Let's see if I can get that to work. Here we go. So you remember this worked three times. It actually worked four times, but we only used it um, uh, for a short position. And this is the Dow daily chart, and I'm showing it with the green and the black lines. These are moving averages. When the green line goes underneath, the black line changes to pink. When it goes back above, it's green. What's really important about this is, is there is a, a pattern that identifies the rectangle formation that it had a peak D, and then from that peak, peak D, the fourth highest peak. Remember, we were talking about that a moment ago. Other things can happen. Look what happened. We had that sharp sell-off from April down to the June 3rd high, low. Then we had the sell-off back, and that was right there. That was on the 16th of July. Same thing happened. Uh, we were able to use that to get short seven points from the top. And there's that rectangle formation it took 13 days before the uh, moving averages crossed negative, very sharply negative. Here we had the same thing. We just missed the short. We got it a little later on, about 100 and so points from the top. And we managed to hold that on the way down. And then the 14 days later, the uh, Two moving averages cross negative. I thought it was the same case recently. It went sideways. Even the the, the one on on uh, Thursday, Thursday was holding basically sideways. One, two, three, four, five. About five bars sideways. Six bars usually the one that pulls back. This is the one that skyrocketed up. It moved up. So now we might have to start this over again because that. Uh, fast moving average, the nine period moving average is just moving. Uh, look how quickly it's moving up. It's going to take at least six or seven bars for the for this to to start to turn down decisively. 
Unless it's, we, we've already had a couple of bad news events. Uh, there's a China news today that was negative about them thinking twice about everything. Um, it didn't affect the market for more than that 8.30 drop. <laughs> and then it came right back. So there is definitely, you can just based on this, there's a, a very good chance that the topping formation is still in a process. And it hasn't really, well, I can't say it's begun. We haven't even had a down candle. Look at this, one, two, three, four. A little doji candle, but it was still up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look, uh, of the last 11 bars, we've only had three, four tiny little doji stalling motions, but mostly big green bars. So I don't want to get in front of it now. This is acting well. And so I wanted to just show you this. This is what I'm discussing, the power of these moving averages. I, I used it correctly before. There was no reason why I didn't, I, I shouldn't have expected that this would change uh, right here, other than that news on Friday where the market gapped up and that was it. And that's all we needed. So we got, a, you know, one and a half percent loss, one, actually less, and we're out, we're done. But we missed Upside opportunity. I don't like that. Now, what is what does the peak D mean? Look, yes, the dollar peak D, the first of October, pulls back. There's an arch formation that I call the dreaded H formation. If it holds well, it can rally. If it rallies sharply, it can go towards the previous high. If it takes that out and the technicals are strong, it can go even higher. But even this is forming a much bigger arch formation because the D in the weekly chart says, hey, be careful here. And the leg D with the probably, I don't see how in the next week and a half to the end of the month, or whatever it is to the end of the month, we're going to make a new high above 99.67 unless something spectacular happens. That says the dollar is, uh, you got to look at the dollar very closely. And that tells me that that moving gold today that was down, uh, wrong chart, that move that was very negative in the do, in the in, in gold earlier on, down six and then down four, and now it's up four and a half. That's a nice that's a nice bit of action. Now, I'm also going to spend some time tomorrow because I'm talking about the Chapman Wave techniques. Look at this rectangle formation. You know my expression, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. And if, if it goes for a long time, it becomes like a like a fulcrum as you go above it and below it and above it and below it until a certain point where you keep going either above it, treating it as a, as a support level, or below it, treating it as a resistance. So this rectangle formation, I'll show you um, the rectangle formation, how long it can last, can be a very telling instrument in your technical tools. You don't have to use it until it, it comes back, until it goes into it. And you say, okay, now, now it's defined it. I call this, this is the fulcrum or the uh, propeller shaft midpoint. Now look at this, CCI, I'm gonna be talking a lot about this, one of our trades, uh, no, no, sorry, it wasn't CCI. It was another one that I was looking at, which was, am I, gonna, am I forgetting now what it was? That's not good. That is not good at all. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let me get that. Oh, that's right. There's a stock that I featured the other day um, for subscribers. I had a whole thing. I showed, I showed them the chart. And I said, this chart has made a Chapman Wave volume price climax. And it should trade up at least for the next 28 bars, that's 28 days, it's a daily chart. And if it hasn't even come back towards the low, it can go for 56 bars. Well, this is now, service now. Look at this propeller shaft fulcrum that I put in here. It's gone right back in. I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get back. And the lowercase h goes to an M pattern. Oh, a lot of techniques. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman dollars up for S&P's unchanged. Be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, everyone. So we're back. And I just wanted to say that within the, the the hour and a half that we have, usually I would take a whole day for this, but within the hour and a half, I'm going to identify patterns that have worked really well, patterns that I suspect are going to be implemented over the coming months, because I do anticipate that at a, some point we're going to get a really sharp pullback, and that's going to be maybe the PD that we get in the Dow. The other charts are all um, uh, alluding to higher highs in 2020 in the Chapman Wave methodology. Let me just do this for a second here. I'll show you what I mean. I look at the monthly charts, INDU. See the Dow is still leg D, very strong leg D. It's got a time sequence to November, 11 months and 11 months. I don't know if this is going to be a turnaround month. Maybe Jan December turns out to be a much weaker month. My contention has always been that when the Dow, especially the Dow, makes an all-time high into year, and then in September, August, September, October has that usual, it wasn't that deep this year, but it has a usual very sharp pullback and comes back and makes a new high the last week of October into the first week of November. That's usually a bullish sign and says that the, the mark of the Dow should close reasonably well within the parameters of an all-time high on the last day of December. That's, that's one thing. But in the meantime, this is a leg D, but it's way ahead in the Chapman methodology to the others. Look, the S&P is at this particular point very strong, but it's only in leg B. Even though the Dow had just fractional highs to make it B, the S&P managed to squeak to a new high each time to be able to have only leg A that came about in July. I mean, from December low, 2,346 up to 3,027. I mean, that is a huge move. Um, and now we're in leg B, and that says you can't get a peak B until December if there's no new high in December, new high bar. And then it comes January, that'll be C, and then February, that'll be a peak C, and then March will be leg D. So you can't until the first few months of uh, 2020. So far, it's looking like we're going to be going to higher highs in 2020 because you're only in B 
in the monthly chart of the S&P. Look at the QQQ. That's only in leg C. So that means that in worst case basis, let's say D is a peak, peak C because there's no new high bar in, um, why do I say high bar? Because you've got to take out the very high of this bar of November in December to extend that into the next month, into December. So, okay, so as it stands right now, what you've got is leg C, very strong. Technicals are very strong. Weekly technicals are strong. So it's leg C in the weekly, it's leg C in the monthly. But the monthly says you can't get a D until 2020. The earliest it would be in January. Okay, wait a minute. IWM is lagging very badly, down 41 cents right now. That's not the point. The point is that it's been in a big rectangle. Talk about rectangle formations. Look at this. A rectangle formation since it broke out and that December low of 125 went into the January and then the February uh, time frame and then March, and it's sort of stuck between a support level of 143, and I believe it's like 160. Yeah, and 160 to the upside. Look at that rectangle. Now we've gone below it. Now let's see if we go above it. But what, what happens here? Maybe the market takes a bit of a pullback, and all of a sudden, the uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden the IWM, the Russell 2000, takes on leadership or It hasn't done it yet. But I'm saying that that's the kind of thing I'd be looking for. That's what we're going to deal with in my webinar coming up tomorrow night. What sectors and what stocks look like they can really uh, lead the market into uh, 2020? What stocks look like they need further consolidation or a consolidation? Where exactly are we? What are we looking at? And uh, that's part of it. Plus these techniques that I'm talking about, um, the rectangle formation, how the MACD and stochastic work. I just tried to put it together in a couple of capsule. Um, let me see if I can get this one here. Which one is this? Uh, yeah, okay, we can go to this one here. So I'll just move over to, um, which one is that? That's now. So I'll go back to now and I'll show you some interesting things. The only reason why we didn't get it the other day, I didn't put it in as a buy, at 230 or whatever it was at the time, we had low price stocks that were going to give potential of much better gains, percentages, percentage-wise, and that's that's the reason why I decided to keep it that way. And um, so this is very good action in now, service now, trading up seven today at 267. But look, there's the arch formation. There's the price time match. There's the lowercase h template that if it doesn't break out up or down, it can create this rectangle formation, creating a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, which can continue even if it makes a larger arch. And that's kind of what I was looking for. You remember that breakout that we saw in the Dow that I, I couldn't, I didn't play when I was, I was showing you just a short while ago. Um, we, we just didn't get that upside because it broke so quickly. Instead of breaking down in this third arch formation, it broke to the upside. So now you're in this propeller shaft, but you've taken out the low. Will it stall in this area here? Well, there are a couple of things what I want to talk about tomorrow. Night. I want to talk about gaps. What happens when you fill a gap? How important it is? Uh, gaps mean nothing until you come back to the gap and how, it's, how you treat it. It's almost like a particular candle formation. So I'll be talking about all these things. So far, this um, service now still looks very good. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to really skip many things tomorrow night, but I'm going to try to be as thorough as I can on what I choose to do and show the power of certain te techniques that we've used, um, how that price uh, volume climax low uh, has worked fantastically for now. There's another stock that I'm looking at that had the same thing. Oh, there was one that we had. Um, the other one that I'm also going to feature, CCI. You remember I was talking about this? This is in the REITs area, Crown Castle, uh, in, the, in the towers. Look, look at this beautiful template of the Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle that when you take it out in a shorter period of time, the cup formation with a left side, right side price time match, and you take out the price in a shorter time, you can create this cup and ladle pattern, not a cup and ladle, cup and ladle, Chapman Wave methodology. And that can take you to at least a D. Well, it took you to a D. And then it had a Chapman Wave two bar reversal. I talk about that. I talk about how we, we rallied, uh, we took profits on this on the way up. And uh, what we were doing, I talk about the lowercase h, this dreaded h pattern. Look what happened. There's the h, it holds goes under it by 50 cents, and then bounces back, can't do anything, goes even lower. What is all that? What about the 200-period moving average? 
Those are things on, these are easy things that you can put in your charts. You won't need me to do it, you can do it yourself. And it's all, I mean, it's based on the architecture that's within your trading platforms that you all have. There's nothing here that's created um, that you need a, a program for. It's all there. Question in the den. Well, I look at plug, another one that we chose, we had for just a brief moment, and it's just screaming to the upside. Uh, we got out of it. I really liked it, and I wanted to get in the other day. I featured it as a stock. That's it, what I call the rocket ship. It's, there's a group that I call now the rocket ship. And look at this. It's now in a leg C in the daily. We don't have it now, unfortunately. But some subscribers know that I've been talking about it. I've featured it. Um, we have had it, and they've kept it, and they've done very well. So congratulations to you. Leg C in the daily, leg D in the weekly, plug power, hydrogen power, fuel cells. That's why I featured it. And then we've got, and now it's got the Chapman Wave cup and ladle pattern potential in the monthly chart. Wow, this is very good action. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman does up six, and we'll be right back. Take your questions at 877 927 6648. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yes, so um, plug, as I say, in leg C. I just wanted to just do, uh, do a review of all, all the indices as, as we're uh, going through here. So let's see. The Dow right now, I'm anticipating some kind of a doji candle after the Marabuzu candle of Friday. No wicks. Uh, it's very important. Most of the time, it's given us very good reason readings. The one that missed was the one right here, but that wasn't the gap to the upside with an island reverse, an island gap. This is one that 
had was inside the bar before. This is the 1st of November. There was this huge move up. Dow closed at, uh, well, hit 27,347. Next day, it opens at 27,402. And that was it. It hasn't actually gone back. That gap will be filled at some point. So I had a question. So what exactly did you learn? This is talking to me about last week's miss. Well, it was a, a one and a quarter percent miss. That's, that's, that's the loss. The miss for me was not having been in the long position and now starting to look to see whether or not the moving averages are showing some signs of deterioration. So if you think um, that I just let things go and I say, oh, 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 what's the big deal? It's always a big deal for me. I spent most of the weekend studying the charts, saying, just looking at this in, in terms of saying, forget about a position. What are you looking at right now that said that you were correct and what do you, up until Thursday, and what changed on Friday? Well, look, the unbalanced volume in the daily chart went right to an overbought. This is one of the most overbought readings that we've had in the unbalanced volume. Go back, you won't see any even close. Look at this, even close to where it was, number one. And it was in a leg E to the upside. In, it was a D at that point in the Chapman Wave methodology. And usually it's a little behind the actual price. So if the chart itself is in E and this is in D, it says, hey, you're getting kind of close to some kind of a pullback. So that to me was a good sign. That was number, number one. Number two is it hadn't up until then, but it did right at that moment resemble Many of the, uh, let me just go through this here, many of the patterns that we were looking at before, look, when I gave the sell signal, that mag, sorry, I keep saying, this is the green nine period moving average was very sharply high. There was not a clue other than my Chapman Wave methodology to say there could be a pullback. And we got it the day before the high. On this one here, we got it even earlier. We got it seven points from the high. And look, this, the nine period moving average was absolutely fantastic. It was using the methodology. Then when it went sideways, which I thought this was doing very well, there was no, no reason, except for one thing. I'd said before that if you make a new high, all the others, even going back to this one right here that I had identified a couple of weeks ago, this one right here on the 25th of February when the Dow went to 26,241, it was five or six days later before it turned down sharply, but it never made a new high. So that's the, that's the first mistake I had noticed. The second mistake was that within the context of what I look at, on the other occasions, the stochastic had already started turning down. And I had said it's my rule of thumb, and that's where I kicked myself because it was the rule of thumb that very, very seldom makes a mistake. And the rule of thumb says that when the stochastic is holding steady in the 93 to 95% area or even higher today to 97%, it's going to take a while for the price to come down and it could be very choppy in the process unless there's just such a bad news event that within three days you drop eight to 1100 points. And I just didn't see anything yet to see to do that. So that was that was really the error that I made in saying, let's short. In fact, that should have just been saying, hey, go long. Even right now, we should still be long waiting for the kind of turnaround that would have occurred. So absolutely, it's a good question. Where did I see? Have I learned anything? I've learned not to question a technique that I developed and used forever and, and talked about it forever that when the stochastic is flat and holding in the 93 to 97% area, it takes something else for it to really turn down and it's gonna either be vicious or it's just gonna be a bumpy ride that takes many days before um, there's a crossover and you start to see the stochastic in the 88% or 86% area. So good question, I hope I answered it as honestly as I could. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. But that, the third thing was that within the Chapman Wave methodology, even now I've got to say, wait a minute, you've got this thing that you call the instant restart. 
Well, within three bars, the Dow went from 27,774 on the 7th to 27,770 on the 12th. So that's the three bars. It was the next bar that went to a fractional new high. Everything about it suggests that that is probably not an instant restart. But wait a minute. If you go to the S&P, SPX.X, you did get within three bars a new high. And it's managing to make another high. And the MACD is still good and stochastic still at 94%. This, I'm going to circle it now. I don't like to have complicated looking at charts. I'll try to make my make it as clear as possible. Yes, could turn around to be an instant restart. I just don't think so, based on this uh, unbalanced volume, but it failed me last week. Maybe it will fail again. And you're in the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. I'll be talking about that as well. So, yes, this is saying to me, at this particular uh, um, at this particular time, you've got to be careful. And I did explain the buy, the buys. I explained the June third one was a clear one, and the other ones had that H pattern that suddenly spiked upside, where it was it was so clear. Now look at the QQQ. On the QQQ side, you've got a pattern that also has a potential Chapman wave to have three. Um, buy signals from a D going all the way up, into, that's unusual. So this says to me again, getting a little toppy right now, let's monitor this very closely. And that's the position that I think I, I'm comfortable saying. Stochastic is very good. MACD is finally starting to dip a little bit. Got to watch it. All right, now let's get to some other questions that I had. I do see the call. I don't see the call. Yep, we've got Scott in Safety Harbor. Scott, how are you? Oh, Scott. I didn't see you there. Sorry. I, I don't know if Scott's talking about you wanted to talk about uh, Macy's. Scott, you can call back. Sorry, I didn't realize that you were holding. Uh, I wanted to go through this because I've got the webinar coming up. A lot of people have asked me exactly what you will be discussing and how does it relate to what you've been doing. And it's related very well because I'll show you some of the stocks that have done extremely well in the interim. So um, Macy's had a very good move. It, on Friday, it spiked to the 17 area. Did it hit it exactly 17.01 17 on the 15th? Inside bar today. Now, I don't know if Scott's going to call back. Bop, 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 bop. Nope, he hasn't called back yet. But what I will do is I'm, I, I said to Scott, and I said it the day after I said to him, I don't really see anything yet. And then uh, Macy's pulled back quite sharply. Um, didn't break down, just broke down into that rectangle formation. I'll say it again. The rectangle formation can last a lot longer than one's patience. And this is right here. You're looking at Macy's in this rectangle formation. And it says it's stuck between 17 and, uh, and 0.70. And probably the base of support now is 15.50. So I'll try to get back to it in a moment. But in the meantime, we've got a break coming up. Dow's up 11. S&P's fresh. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm changing. No, slightly down. I'll be right back. That's a chat. We're looking forward to the webinar tomorrow night. Because if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%.
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So um, a couple of questions. I'm, I'm also going to do this. It'll only it won't take very long at all. I'm just going to add it in. In fact, I better put it in right now so that I don't forget it. Give me a chance. Give me a moment here. I'll just find a little blank space and I'll put it in right here. Um, there we go. So parallel lines. All right. So uh, in, in trying to find parallel lines, if you're looking at Macy's, look, Macy's has hit resistance in this dashed line. Now what I like to do is I like to have a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Look, it got stuck right at the repellent zone. I'll make that red. I don't know if you, if you have colors, that's fine. You don't have to have colors, but I, I like colors. I, I came to charting through patterns, pattern recognition. Um, and at the bottom here, I don't even have to put anything because the bottom's are way down in the 1540s, 1540, yeah, 1540s. So at 1517, if it breaks out in this particular phase and it starts to go to 1735, I'm not going to call that E to F. I'm going to say, hey, that very well could be a new buy mode because it's starting to make the cup formation right here. <clears throat> here you are, look. Love to take previous highs, make a cup formation. Doesn't have to be to the exact bottom. I'm looking for something with symmetry, that's all. And the symmetry says, right there. Symmetry says, if this is the case, then it should try to make, so Scott, if you're listening, this is what I'd be looking for right here. Let me just get rid of that phone call. <clears throat> I'd make this a rather thick, line, thick channel and I'll go sideways to the side from here to there. Here we go. Yeah, okay. And I'll go to this particular candle here because it looks to me like identifying it. I always choose a particular candle, which I'll discuss in my webinar tomorrow for the left side, right side price time match. And I go here, I make this green because that's going to be the target upside. And if it works out, what we've got is the chance that if it breaks higher, I can start a new buy mode, and that buy mode is going to go all the way to the high that was made there. And I'll tell you, this time sequence says that it should take until, oh, that's really steep, 17 point this high. I usually don't like to go to the high, the most important high, which would be this one of the 9th, 11th of September, 1785. I'd rather go to the next one, which is 1760. So between 1760 and 1775, if it kicks in, if everything goes well, by the 25th, 26th of November, whoops, 20, yes, 26th to 27th of November, it should be up in the 1750s. 
If it fails, it makes an arch formation and it comes back 1650 to 1613 uh, is the support area. So this gives me parameters. The MACD is good, stochastic is not, it's at 79%, it's rallying. On balance volume has reached a particular peak that says it's pulling back a little bit, but so far action is good. It said weekly chart, huge price move in the MACD, yet the price has really failed. I think arch formation, going to a second arch formation is what we're looking at, lowercase h to another h, uh, another uh, like an M pattern, second arch, is trading in a range. And that's what I'd be thinking right now. So if you get these short-term trades, bravo, that's exactly where you excel, Scott. That's what I'd be doing. I'm not sure yet I want to hold on. I'm uh, too tight. <laughs> okay, so the uh, next thing I wanted to ask, I've been asked by many people, it turns out coincidentally, about Roku. <clears throat> yes, this Chapman Way falling axe formation. That's where there's a price move to the upside. It goes to a D or an E, starts to pull back, and then it makes lower highs and much lower lows. And then it turns around. And if it turns around and takes out the left side, the, the left side resistance, um, if it takes out the, the resistance level, it can go to the left side high. The next high here in this particular case would have been 142.65. And then the 151.48, 151.30, two bar re Chapman wave reversal of the uh, beginning of November. It's gone th right through it. And this says there's a chance you can get a one to one expansion in Roku, Roku streaming uh, media. Um, um, application it's a, it's a where am i it's a hardware package okay that's what i'm looking for so what i'm saying is this measurement right here could be equal to the upside so now let me draw this and show you what i'm talking about and right here there you are and that's the breakout and it's almost there it says at the 167.60 area that's where the next resistance comes in so this is a fantastic move, very quick, 116 on the 7th of November to today's high of 165. So I featured it for my subscribers in the first paragraph of my opening call newsletter. This is the page that says uh, it's the Trader's Corner. And I usually give a quick, a brief summary of exactly where we are, what we're expecting, and what's working, what's not working. And I featured Roku, but I didn't give it as a buy three. It would be four days ago. I wanted to see how it would test the resistance. Bam, it spiked through. By that point, I thought, all right, now the risk is a little too high because it could double top at 151. No, it didn't even think about that. It just powered a short covering, I'm sure. This is what it looks like, as well as new buying, because, I mean, people like this company, Roku, Inc., a shares, streaming devices, 164.41, up 7.11 today. This is a big move. And look, the MACD is confirming with an M-shaped formation getting a little bit overbought. Stochastic's finally well in the 80% area at 86%. The monthly chart, actually the weekly chart is, is lagging. This is a price move based on the daily more than the monthly. All right, so I'd go through that. Next question I had is, could I look at the TLT? Yep, TLT. <clears throat> that was the question. Uh, what are yields going to do? Well, we've gone to a leg B in the TLT at 138.19, up 43 cents. If you look at the weekly chart, now I'm going to talk about the lowercase h that I call, this is the dreaded h pattern. Let me just, I don't know if I've even got it now because I've done so many charts today. Give me one second. It's right here. And will I find it? Oh, don't tell me I lost it. Yep, I think I have. I have to, don't tell me I have to redo it. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, Dawn. Oh, I, I put in too many charts in this particular list. Have I got it? Have I got it? No, I haven't. All right. So we're always looking at a pattern that says arch formation or cup formation. There can be an arch formation that looks like this if it takes out the left side low. So it comes down and style. Let's go to single there. So it comes down, stops especially after a D or an E, stops, has a bounce, and then either at a peak A or a peak B, it just, it cannot hold. It starts to fail and it starts to roll over. And the template looks just like a lowercase h, with a sloping back, that is. And if it takes out that left side low and closes below it, you've got to be careful because you have to bounce within two bars. You have to bounce right back into, in this case, above 136.54, which it's done. It didn't do that last week, but this week, oh, sorry, it didn't do it last week. 
Didn't do it two weeks ago, but it did it last week. So this is the third week that it's attempting to try to find a stable uh, pattern. And what it says in this lowercase h pattern, the dreaded h, is if it takes out the left side low, but closes above it within two bars, maybe three, but I usually like to say two bars, it says it could rally, and it could rally to the next a peak on the left side, or a moving average or a gap, but something that is an inflection point that failed before. And in this case, it stopped right at the weekly nine and 14 period exponential moving averages. If it breaks above, then the next level will be 141.68, 141.68. Um, that would be the next level up. I'm certain Down. you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. And uh, just there are a couple of things I need to get to before we wrap up. You go to Steve, you go to, go to Dave, and then Tom and Brian. Uh, MJ, we were in it a long time ago. We just got out. I see there's something wrong with the harvest. Uh, what is it called? Uh, alternative harvests, the marijuana and cannabis area. Legally, there's a, there are big problems. There's a lot of competition from the real world. I just, I we're out, and I have not yet seen a buy signal. It could come up soon, but so far nothing. Be careful. Be very careful. Now, the other one was, um, uh, yes. And then I had a question. What about the stocks that? Uh, what about the stocks that uh, we have in the opening call? Uh, would you talk about them? So just, I, 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 I'll do this quickly. BDSI. This is bio. There we go. This is this is a, a company called Bio Delivery Science. 
there's a beautiful cup formation. I mean, look at this cup formation in the weekly chart. It's right here, but I'm treated as a cup that's a half cup. In other words, it comes from a huge decline. And I picked it out and said in December, the target should be the uh, uh, six dollars and forty five level but it did a cup and chapman wave cup and later break out to a peak d and now it's stalled in the weekly chart instead of d in the daily so all the techniques that we've been talking about are right here the other one that we still have uh, 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 cyber cyber arc look there's a cup formation forming it's holding very well it's making a rectangle formation i'll talk about that tomorrow night still think it looks very good now, where would you get in a new position? We'll talk about that. It's, we went from 104 to 100, almost 120. Now it's pulling back and digesting. We're in at 100 and um, no, we're in at 100 in the 104s, and, and, and that's good. So yeah, these, this, these are the patterns that have been working. I, I tried and tested, and we keep doing them. So keep and we've still got Bank of America from December long-term hold. Went to peak F. It's stalling now on the 7th of. Uh, of, of November 3360. Uh, it's holding really nicely. Big leg B. There's another cup and ladle breakout. And the monthly chart has got a beautiful V shaped pattern. So, yeah, these are the patterns that we're using. And these are the patterns that I will talk about tomorrow night and what we're looking at for new stocks, what we're looking at for the rest of the year going into 2020. It's going to be such an important webinar, especially looking ahead. Hey, have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and Dave Biden, Tom O'Brien. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out the front page of TFNN opening call. See you about tomorrow's webinar for subscribers.